Okay, today's lesson is on quadrilaterals. Things to know. Whenever you see these shapes, the red arrows indicate parallel sides. sides. The red squares indicate a 90 degree angle. And the red lines indicate congruent sides. Okay, so if you look here, you will see that a quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides. So every single shape on this page has four sides. So every single thing is a quadrilateral, which is why our map begins at the top of the quadrilateral and then goes down. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel lines or parallel sides. Um, so these red arrows indicate that this is the pair of parallel sides. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with opposite sides that are parallel and congruent. So if you look at the top and bottom of this parallelogram, they're both parallel and they're both congruent, as well as the left and right side. They're both parallel and they're both congruent. A kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of congruent adjacent sides and opposite sides that are not congruent. So here you have two adjacent sides that are congruent represented by the one line and then down here represented by the two lines show that these are congruent. The top lines are not congruent with the bottom lines but the adjacent sides are. It looks like a kite. Okay, also a rectangle and a rhombus can be considered a parallelogram as well as a square. Everything down here can be considered a parallelogram because a rectangle, a square, and a rhombus have the opposite sides that are parallel and congruent. Okay, so a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. So this parallelogram, the special rectangle, has four right angles. Opposite sides are still parallel and congruent. You also have a rhombus. It is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. A parallelogram doesn't always have to be a rhombus, but a rhombus is always a parallelogram. And this is something you'll just really have to think about looking at this map. Okay, in a square, can be considered a rectangle and a rhombus, but more specifically it is a square which is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four right angles. So a square can be a rhombus because it is a parallelogram with four congruent sides, but a rhombus may not always be a square if the rhombus doesn't have four right angles. Okay, so example number one. Classify the quadrilateral and give it the most specific name. The quadrilateral here has four congruent sides and has four right angles. The most specific would be a square. Example number two. Classify the quadrilateral and give it the most specific name. This quadrilateral has exactly one pair of parallel lines. The quadrilateral with that description is a trapezoid. Okay, like the triangles, the sum of the angle measures of a triangle is 180 degrees. In a quadrilateral, the angle measures add up to be 360. So A plus B plus C plus D in this figure will add up to be 360. So example number three, we're going to find the value of X. So if we, we know if we add everything together, 100 plus 100 plus 80 plus X, you'll get 360. So let's solve this equation. Adding like terms, 280 plus X equals 360. Got to get rid of 280, so we subtract from both sides. And we get that x is equal to 80. And if you notice here in a parallelogram, the opposite angles are congruent. So if that's 100, that's 100. If this is 80, this is 80 as well. All right, example number four, find the value of x. 
this one is not so easy as far as knowing the opposite sides are congruent. This is just a quadrilateral, um, not, nothing special. So if we add everything together here, we should get 360. So to find x, we need to set up an equation. 129 plus 39 plus 82 plus x will equal 360. When we add our like terms, we get 250 plus x is equal to 360. Then we subtract 250 from both sides and get 110. So if we were to check 39, 129, plus 82, plus 110, we should get 360. Okay, example number five, we are going to draw a parallelogram with a 70 degree angle and a 120 degree angle. First step, we need to draw a line. It's going to be the bottom of my parallelogram. Then we need to draw a 60 degree angle, and I saw there that it, the, it says 70, but that is a typo. We're going to draw a parallelogram with a 60 degree angle and a 120. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is draw that 60 degree angle. Then we're going to move our protractor over and we're going to draw a 120 degree angle. Because this is a parallelogram, we need to go in the same direction of the line that we did with the 60 degree angle. Um, if it was a triangle, we would go the other way. So, let's draw that 120 degree angle. Then we draw the remaining side. Both pairs of opposite sides should be congruent and parallel. Okay, try these on your own. See what you can do.